near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. How's it going, you fragging bastitch? That's right, you out there. You're the one that asked for this. I am the Uncanny Omar, and this is Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions. Today, I'm going to be doing an overview of the Lobo, the big fragging compendium from DC Comics. So let's take a look at this together. That's right, everyone's favorite bastitch, finally got his own compendium. So here we have this pe uh, piece right here by Simon Beasley. Uh, so we do have the Lobo logo there, Keith Giffen, Alan Grant, Simon Beasley, and Val Simaics. Big Fraggin Compendium 1. I love the fact that it's a 1, the DC logo there. Lobo, Big Fraggin Compendium 1, the DC logo. And then this piece back here, it's about fragging time. Believe me, that joke... <laughs> if you're not digging it now, you might get old. Uh, but this is a compendium, so it is the size of those trade paperbacks. Like the paper size of the trade paperbacks, of course. It's the same trim size as the trades. It's not a deluxe edition, it's not a hardcover. Uh, but obviously a lot bigger. This is a big freaking book. So let's take a closer look at this cover here, because I did want to read this. Make sure you can see it. Caution, this comic contains mindless violence, numerous utterings of frag, see what I mean, and bastage, space penguins, and lots of things exploding. And then the back of the book, the retail of this one is $59.99, and it is a compendium. So go ahead and hold that up. It is so, uh, all glued binding and soft cover spine so let's go ahead and crack this book open and talk about the stories in here and of course show off the artwork that we're going to be seeing in here all right let's go ahead and take a look inside of the main man's first compendium of course no end sheets because it's a compendium so soft cover looks like it is a matte finish and you have your title page there big fragging compendium one and here are all of the credits, including Keith Giffen doing the plots and breaks down uh, for the entirety of the book. Alan Grant and John Wagner, David DeVries and Louis Simonson, Roger, uh, Roger Silfer actually doing some of the dialogue and script, actually co-creator of Lobo. Uh, and then, of course, you have Simon Beasley, Keith Giffen, Val Simaics, Christian Alamy, and Cam Kennedy Martin Emin, just to name a few of the artists that worked on Lobo. A lot of Marvel UK, or not just Marvel UK, but 2000 AD artists in here, like Carlos Esquera and Cam Kennedy, and of course, uh, Simon Beasley, and a lot more others that you'll probably recognize. And then your ink, Simon Beasley, Keith Giffen, and Dennis Rodier, Bob Smith, Martin Emin, Klaus Jansen, just to name a few of the colorists down here, like Danny Vozo and Anthony Tolan, and your letters, Todd Klein and Bill Oakley, just to name a few. This is a Beasley cover from the very first issue. Uh, your table of contents, I do love that they're putting these in here. Where are you going to find each of these particular stories and when it was originally published? So we are jumping from 1983 to 1990 and that's a bit of a jump i'm surprised they actually skipped a few stories and more of a table of contents and kicking it off with the omega man number three making this the first appearance of lobo so collected in here is the omega man number three the lobo miniseries one through four lobo zero through nine lobo annuals one and two Lobo Peril Military Christmas Special number one, which is an awesome story. Lobo's Back one through four, my very first Lobo comic. Uh, Blazing Chain of Love number one, Lobo Infanticide. Oh, and by the way, my copy, and I'm sure it's just my copy, did come with a ripped couple pages here. And every copy's different, so fear not, this isn't like a printer error. It's just... Luck of the draw, but I ended up with this right here. Um, and also the Un-American Gladiators, Portrait of a Victim, 
and the Lovo Convention Special, which is awesome too. A contract on God, and that is G A W D. Lobo in the chair, the Green Lantern Corps quarterly number eight. Superman the Man of Steel number thirty. The Demon eleven through fifteen. I am curious why that was added though. And then profile pages from Who's Who number eight and the Lobo Cop number one parody. This is a biggie. This book has 1,320 pages and again retails for $59.99. So we did kick it off here with his first appearance. Now, this is the pre crisis first appearance. So he looks less like the biker dude that a lot of people are used to and more like a probably like a rock star from the 80s and the way they would dress. And this was DC's answer to, let me make sure I'm giving the credit where credit is due, who the editor was at the time. Uh, was it Mark Wolfman? Uh, but it was Mark Wolfman and Roger Silver and then, of course, Keith Giffen coming up with this particular character. And, like, their answer to Wolverine and then later on Wolverine and the Punisher. He's that type of character. He's a bounty hunter. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say that the origin you're given here about an alien race wiping out his race is completely different than what happens in the next issue that's collected in here. Now, this is what I find interesting because in between these issues, there was a lot more other stories that I thought they would include in here uh, because I feel like it's necessary the first post-crisis story is the JLI story, the Justice League International, where he's hired to go and get uh, who's it, Mr. Miracle. Uh, and then later on, he appeared in the pages of Legion. And in Legion, it's where they explain the healing factor that he has, that he can regrow. <laughs> it's an awesome story. It includes his fourth grade teacher and an, an intergalactic spelling bee to get rid of ignorant people. Uh, but that is skipped here, and you jump right to his new era origin story. So this is Keith Giffen, Alan Grant, and Simon Beasley. And Alan Grant will be writing the ongoing series of Lobo. Uh, but this is where it's stating exactly who Lobo was, how he was the one that is responsible for wiping out the Zardians out of existence when he was just a teenager how he left that particular planet and all of them dead with this flying scorpion virus and how he became a bounty hunter and all of it had to do with the fact that he was pretty much bored he's on a space hog and he has some space dolphins that he travels the world with and it's so interesting to go from the Omega Man that's collected in here with the, oh, bounty hunter, and this is the reason why he's a bounty hunter, oh, he looks like that, to this biker dude that is hugely inspired by Beasley himself. But this sets up the new status quo and the new post-Crisis on Infinite Earths origin for the character. Now, after that is where we have the demon stories collected in here. And this is all written by Alan Grant. He's joined by uh, Val Simaix, who, of course, drew some Conan. This is Claire and the Witch Boy that ends up being a big part of the story, along with, of course, Etrigan the Demon. It's a long story arc, and I find it really interesting that this is collected back here and not the Justice League International issues or Legion issues. Uh, because It's not a bad story, it just makes as much sense, if not less sense, than adding those particular issues. And there is a vast difference between the character that is appearing through here and the character that appears in the Christmas special and, of course, Lobo's back and in between the Lobo miniseries. So, yes, the next issue that's collected in here is the paramilitary Christmas special, and it is awesome. Starts off with Lobo just being drunk at a bar and ends up taking a hit because he is a bounty hunter. And the Easter Bunny ends up hiring him to go and kill Santa Claus. So that's exactly the kind of stories you're going to be told in here. Uh, it does say... I believe in the back that it does have some parental guidance in the back. It should say so. Caution, this comic contains mildest violence, numerous utterings of... No, it doesn't really say. Okay, uh, there is mainly like mature themes in here that are due to the violence and some nudity. Uh, and then just the way that the... The vulgarity is censored has always cracked me up because it's always fragging. This is my first Lobo comic. 
Uh, so I I knew that he had appeared in the pages of the Justice League, things like that, immature content like that, strongly suggested for mature readers. And that is what drew me to this. Like, I knew who he was, but I was like, oh, I like that cover. And the reason I picked this up at the, it was a baseball card shop, was because, well, I was 12 or 13 at the time. And my local comic book store would not sell me this because it was mature readers. Now, the co uh, the card shop did not know me at all. So, of course, they sold it to me. You know, they're trying to make money. I do love the fact that it's got different covers, that it's, like, extremely suggested. Uh, so, put it back, kid. Talking to people like me. But it is Keith Giffen, Alan Grant, and Simon Beasley working on this particular book. And this is establishing why Lobo is hard to kill, why he becomes immortal. And I wanted to check this out because it felt like a heavy metal magazine, something I wasn't supposed to be reading, and I wanted to know more about the guy. And that's kind of how I justified buying this. Because, I mean, what was it, $1.50, I think? I was getting mainly Marvel comics at the time and some DC stuff, that are usually Batman and Superman or any of the big crossovers. Uh, but I wanted to check this out, and I fell in love with the artwork, so much so that I started buying the rest of these issues. So yes, Ro uh, Robo, that comes a little bit later, Lobo Cop. Lobo ends up getting killed, and when he dies, he goes to heaven, and heaven is like, whoa, this guy's too rowdy, so they send him to hell. And then hell's like, whoa, this guy's too rowdy, so they send him back. And when they send him back, they send him back in the body of a woman. Now, when she ends up dying... Uh, the same thing happens. They keep sending him back, and he comes back as a squirrel. And eventually, heaven and hell are just tired of this guy that keeps dying. And they're like, you know what? He's not welcomed here on heaven, and he's not welcomed here in hell. So, this guy just can't die. And that's what this miniseries establishes. This is when Keith Giffen was going through one of his many experimental phases, such as the... I like to call this the Trencher era, uh, because he was... He was working on an image comic called Trencher, and this is what his art style looked like. He was experimenting also in the pages of Legion of Superheroes, but this is the character that always reminds me, or Trencher always reminds me of the way that Lobo looked through here. This is about his illegitimate kids coming after him, because he has just spread the love across the galaxies, and now he's got these kids that are coming after him. And these kids are a little bit different than somebody like Slobo, that if you're familiar with the pages of Young Justice, that that particular way of, uh, I almost said spreading your seed, but I guess uh, spreading the love is a lot different, right? That is the process of cloning yourself, which they kind of do away with later on. This is the portrait of a victim, which is one of his victims that is coming back and making him feel guilty about killing people they these are the covers that are done by mike mignola for the un-american gladiators all the covers are provided by mignola not at the internal artwork the internal artwork is done by cam kennedy and then we get to the lobos convention special where he's trying to find his copy of superman 75 and he ends up going to one can assume is san diego comic-con and you can only imagine what ends up happening there. The Bloodlines crossover, uh, which introduces us to new characters that will never appear again. But this is pretty much him against the aliens that are trying to uh, take over Earth, which was a big part of the whole Bloodlines storyline. And then <laughs> Lobo Cop, which is an awesome uh, story that... They, I love this right here. Notice to all legal bastiches, this is Lobocop. It is a one-time only parody of Robocop. Lobo is a trademark of DC Comics. Robocop is not. And that's pretty much, you know, letting you know what kind of story this is. Uh, so, yeah, he gets drunk at a bar, passes out. The cops end up taking his brain and putting it into a robot body. And enter Lobocop. Frag all crimes. Uh, yes, it's that type of story. Sophomoric humor. This is Lobo number one. This is the ongoing series. Uh, now by now it's just Alan Grant, Valsimaics. It's not Keith Giffen. Uh, and this right here, I remember having a Chromium cover, if I'm not mistaken, the first issue. And what you'll have in here 
are the first few issues. So there is enough for a volume two because this does continue. I think it went all the way to issue 64, 68, something like that. This is the Green Lantern Corps quarterly, which also had a story from the Emerald Twilight. This is the fight with Superman. And he was a big part of that Superman crossover to the fall. What was it? The Metropolis fall Metropolis, I believe. And then, of course, some more of the ongoing series. Then you have the miniseries, A Contract on God, spelled G-A-W-D. Now, the one thing to note about this character um, is that it's all satirical. It's just making fun of other comics, of other type of stories, and not to be taking itself seriously. Like, the character himself doesn't take himself seriously. Everything is a parody of something. If you've read enough comics, you're going to end up really enjoying this. And I understand this is not for everybody. This isn't everybody's type of humor. He is... Well, he does come across like a one-dimensional type of dude's dude. But he's so much more than that. I mean, there is a reason why his series went on past 60-plus issues. And the humor is not for everybody. It can be gross. Um, it can be over the top. It can be <laughs> hyper-masculine. But I love that stuff, man. I mean, he's a badass for a reason. This goes back to the clones idea, the clone story. There's issue number zero, which talks a little bit about his origin and his rock band. Was it in high school, I think? And then the, oh, in a chair. This is the one by Martin Emmond. And the artwork in here is stunning. It very, very reminiscent of Simon Beasley uh, with a little bit of like maybe Sam Keith and stuff. But again, it's stuff for mature audiences, mainly due to the violence and nudity. This is the annual number two, if I'm not mistaken, the Else Worlds, where it's a take on different type of westerns. So much so that each one of these little short stories are a title from a particular western movie or a TV show for a few frags more. It's things like that. Uh, Sergio Argona is right here. Now, at the very, very end of this, not a lot of extras, but the very last page here is this right here. And that's taken from the uh, handbook, the Who's Who, number eight. And it's just Lobo and a little bit about him and his powers. What Lobo even means, because it's not Wolf. It actually stands for something else. Uh, but as I mentioned, the book has 1,320 pages. And while I reminisce reading or rereading some of these stories, I didn't read all or reread all of them because at one time or another, I have read all of this. The binding actually stayed strong. There's no crease. And I know I laid that book flat. I gave the book the test. Now, of course, that may change after, I don't know, 10 readings. 15 readings. It might crack on you. I don't know. Uh, these books aren't old enough for that to happen. It's not like... I think they've come a long way in making these soft covers. But it's not to say that it's not going to happen, that you're not going to start getting a small crease. But to me, books are supposed to be read. So a crease just shows that, hey, I read that damn thing. You know what? I loved it. I'm going to read it again until it falls apart. Then I'll buy it again, unless it's out of print. Damn it. I should have just kept it on the shelf. Or I should have bought two copies. Don't do that. That's ridiculous. Anyway, the main man's first compendium. Hopefully, there will be a volume two. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this compendium, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this book. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up. If you're a fan of compendiums, would you had rather have an omnibus or maybe trade paperbacks of this? Regardless, we finally got Lobo in a wonderful collected edition. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Smash that like button on the way out. Check us out on Patreon and Spreadshop. Amazing ways to support the channel if you could do so. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.